What's up, class? Welcome back to Art of the Sword Online, episode 3. I hope you're all doing well uh, with the snow, and that you're all feeling well and staying safe. Um, today for our exercises, go ahead and do your usual, uh, your, your stretches, your exercises, and then stretches. As for the relays, you probably won't be able to do those outside. Um, so you can just go ahead and not do those for the bad weather. Today, as I said earlier in our last video, we're going to be reviewing shields. Now, for our junior high class, they didn't really get to go over shields, so I'm going to spend a little more time kind of talking about some extra details about them, and I'll probably assign you some homework. So, the first thing I want to talk about is types of shields. Um, there's really a lot of different types of shields, but I like to think of some core um, main ones that a lot of those shields that vary are based on. Um, one is the heater shield, uh, another is the round shield, uh, the buckler, kite shield, there's the oval shield, and there is the scutum shield. Um, outside of that, there's a lot of other ones, but they all are very similar related to those core ones. Our shields are kind of a mixture between the round and the oval shield. Um, I did create a little bit of almost a spear rest that you can use on our shield. Ours is a little more focused on um, pairing and almost just being in the way of your opponent's attack. I didn't put a second arm strap on the shield. It only has one uh, handle grip. Uh, this was to help prevent the shield and our sparring from being uh, overpowered, um, essentially too good. Uh, when you have a second strap on your shield, it is incredibly good. Um, a lot of times you only had the one hand if you're working together uh, a whole squadron of units and they're using their shields together and they needed to be able to drop that shield quickly if they needed to. A lot of times it only had one handle. Eventually I was going to bring some larger shields that actually had the two strap to be able to show you guys the real difference in the amount of power and control you get with that two strap, but you can't drop the shield as well. Um, so it does limit you in some other ways. So well, let's talk a little bit about the power of the shield. The shield has a lot to offer when it comes to combat. Um, it offers protection, it offers itself as an offensive weapon, um, it offers uh, better capability in teamwork. It can be intimidating to your opponent when you have this big thing in front of you and they're trying to figure out how am I going to get around this and when you know how to use it, uh, they probably won't easily get around it. Uh, altogether throughout history of ancient civilizations all the way up to even medieval and some periods after that, uh, shields were commonly used in tons of different nations, all different kinds of nations. Nations that conquered most of the world, conquered giant regions of the world, um, the shields were extremely prominent. I'm just briefly going to talk about the uh, Spartan culture. This is Sparta! The Spartans believed that the shield was in fact their greatest piece of equipment. If a soldier oftentimes, if they had lost their shield in combat, they would be punished for losing their shield because it was considered to be one of the greatest pieces that they could have. If they lost their spear or their sword, they weren't punished, but the shield was considered the number one thing. And the reason why is because that shield was utilized to help protect the rest of the entire army. Essentially a segmented wall where everyone's shield was creating this wall to help protect and uh, control what was happening. Um, so when somebody lost their shield, they were putting everyone else in danger. In our case, of course, uh, we didn't get to do our team games, which would have been a really great opportunity to experiment with how the shields worked um, teamwork-wise. 
Uh, so a lot of you only know what it's like to use them, uh, essentially just in a one-on-one -on -one sparring match. But even then, I would say most of you know that when you're using the shield, if your opponent doesn't have a shield, you have a pretty great advantage. Especially since the spear only has thrusting capabilities and your shield blocks practically all of the vitals on your body. And even if somebody has just swords or axes or uh, unless another person has a shield, uh, they're pretty much outmatched. So I consider the shield to be um, one of the number one things you can use. I specifically like to use the shield and uh, sword for more of a shorter sword similar to like the gladius that the Romans used because since it doesn't necessarily have a guard that's sticking out that cross guard it doesn't really have much of a cross guard um, it helps getting your thrust without catching on your shield so you can thrust past your shield really easily. The reason why I like the sword more than the spear however is that the spear tends to stick out past your shield. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do about it without ruining the advantage of the spear which is its distance it gives you, right? So since the spear tends to stick past the shield um, it gives your opponent the opportunity to try to bind your spear. You can still utilize the shield to try to get them off, but if they bind your weapon, then you can't really counterattack them or attack them at all. Uh, and you don't want that. So the reason why I like using the sword is because you can have the sword farther back behind the shield and prevent your weapon from being bound. And then they almost have to focus on your shield, which gives you great opportunities to uh, slide past around them with your sword. So uh, let's talk about some guards uh, that you would probably want to use when you're using the shield and sword. And some of these will translate even to the shield and spear. I'm going to tell you three guards uh, that I like to use. So the first one is a window-like guard. Now in the window guard, normally with like your long sword uh, or with a spear, you're essentially kind of twisting yourself backwards and exposing your back a little bit. Uh, in the shield circumstance, uh, I don't actually want you to do that. More of all what I mean is uh, having your sword more up parallel length with your face um, above your shield. And this is a great opportunity to go for like sweeps or uh, slashing attacks and you can still get the thrust but You'll have, you'll have to take a little more time to get your thrust, and your opponent might see that coming a little better. Um, so you may want to focus more on getting slashes with these. Next one is a short, uh, short guard-like kind of stance. So normally in your short guard, uh, you have your sword centered, and it's kind of pointing out. Now in this case, again, like I mentioned earlier, we don't really want to stick our weapon past our shield, because we don't want it to get bound. In this case, your shield is out, and your sword is essentially centered but behind the shield. So your opponent shouldn't really be able to see your sword. Um, this is a really great uh, spot for thrusting. And you can also kind of use the point of your sword to help support uh, the edge of your shield. So if somebody was to make a strong attack inward, that will actually help support it from, from your shield bending in because you only got one hand holding that. You don't have your second strap. The last one is actually like a tail guard. Uh, what I mean by this is your sword is more back actually pointing behind you. The opponent can uh, more of all see your sword, but it's way back where they're definitely not going to catch it. And now your time to bring your sword in is going to take a lot longer, but there's so many options that you're going to be able to do when you bring it in. You can definitely go for a thrust or any sweeps or uh, slashing from here. So those are all your different ones. They all work pretty good. If you're fighting against a spear, you'll follow your typical rules. But otherwise, if you're fighting against another shield or just basically any other weapon, um, these guards are really great to use. Now, there's a couple different strategies of which hand you should hold your uh, shield in. You could hold it in your left hand or you could hold it in your right hand. Uh, to me, one of the benefits of holding it in your left hand is that you can parry your opponent's weapon outward and this gives you a large opening um, of their entire body. 
However, usually your distance is a little farther when this happens, and you may not be as close. You're going to have to really good one for thrust. Uh, if you have the spear, having it in your left hand, the shield in your left hand, um, could be really good so that you hit them out and have a large opening for your thrust with the spear. Now, if you have the shield in your right hand, then what you'll do is you'll be pairing their weapon in on them, which is going to help bind them. Um, this is really good if you're focused more on slashing. Uh, have the shield in your right hand if you have the axe so that you can cut in onto their bound uh, side that they attacked from. The only real thrust you will probably be able to get if you're pairing in with your right hand is to their face. So if you have the spear, hold the shield in your left hand, but if you want more slashing attacks, then you're going to want the shield in your right hand. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you guys some uh, tips and tricks when using the shield. First of all, as we talked about the spear, when it comes to shields, fainting the shield is really key. You want to keep in mind that when you're going to parry with your shield, you kind of want to wait to parry until they actually hit your shield. Don't parry too soon because they might faint you and that might be how they get under your shield. You should be holding your shield a little more out, not on your body, but it should be held um, to the point where your arm is bent out. Not straight out, but bent out. As we mentioned earlier, keep your weapon hidden if you can. Uh, you don't want your opponent to be able to bind your weapon. And also you don't want to block your view with your shield. So focus on parrying uh, out or in, but not to the point where you're blocking your view of them and what they're going to do. By utilizing your shield to block their view so they won't be able to see what you're doing. Uh, also, you want to close distance when you have the shield. You have a little less uh, distance. Even if you have the spear, you're not going to have as much of a reach when you're using the shield. Oftentimes, you're going to have to advance or pass forward um, whenever you're counterattacking or attacking. Um, that's about all we'll really be going over for the shields. I want to assign some homework to you so that you could advance your knowledge on shields. Um, this is especially true for the junior high as we didn't get to go over shields in class. So I want you guys to pick uh, one of the specific types of shields and I want you to do some research on the internet with your parents guidance and permission and I want you to send me via email or Google Classroom um, 10 interesting facts that you've learned about that shield. It can be about the culture of where the shield derived from. Is it Greek? Is it Roman? Uh, is it African? Whatever that culture is, I'd like to know about that culture. What does the culture see in the, the use of the shield? What is the benefit of the shield? Uh, what was, why is it the shape that it is? Things like that. Um, what era it was used in. Um, give me 10 interesting facts that you learned about the shield. Next week, we'll be doing a uh, review on armor. Uh, this will be great for you junior high, as you haven't really gotten to hear much about it. As for the high school class, uh, this will be mostly just review um, on the armor, but definitely looking forward to getting back into the armor stuff. Loved it. Um, wish we could have gotten to do some more of that. But uh, thanks for watching. And bye.